now go to the console of AWS. And from the console, we want to go to the cloud formation. In the cloud formation console, you have multiple choice of how you want to create a new stack, whether you want to create it from a template that you have already, or you want to create it from a quick start guide, or even you can use the designer. So let me show you first. The designer is basically a graphical user interface where you can map a resources or drag and drop a resources from the left side of the AWS resources here. Like for example, I want an EC2 instance. So you can basically create a launch template. You can recreate a network, a route, depending on your need. Now, remember, you have to be very careful about how you create those. So for example, here I create a VPC and that VPC will be used for my EC2 instances and so on. I'm not going to show you how to use the UI of the cloud formation. I just want you to know how it's look like if you have a temp. So let me go back now to my AWS cloud formation console. I will click on a create a resources and I have two resources or I have two options here with a new resources from scratch or with existing resources. This is a click on the new resources. As you can see, we have multiple options. We can use the template in designer. We create it there and then this is will be used to build the stack or we can use a sample template which is the quickest start or we have a template ready and this can be uploaded from our computers or from Amazon S3 URL so you only need pass the URL not the script if you click here in use sample template you will find multiple template there there is the lamp stack which we used for deploying the dynamic website for the cafe we can create a Ruby on Rails we can create WordPress and there is also multi AZ deployment for the same even if you are looking for something running on Windows, you can run a cloud formation template for Active Directory in Windows or some Windows features and role. For this demo, I'm going to select the WordPress blog and then I will click next. However, you could also view this in an, the designer, in the graphical user interface, just to see exactly what this thing is going to create for you. You can see here we have a web server. It's an AWS EC2 instance and we have a web server security group, as simple as that. Below, it can show you the JSON output of this template or the YAML file of this template. So this is how it looks like the cloud formation in the YAML template. For example, here we have a parameter which we need to provide the key name. And that key name, it will be a name of an existing EC2 key pair. Instances type, we are looking also for a parameter for the instance type. So we want the user to give us what is the size of his EC2 instance when we create that web server. If the user provided no value, the default will be used. If you scroll down, you can see also some um, description that you can use for that parameter of the instance type. Now, the SSH location, this is will describe the IP address range that can be used to SSH to this EC2 instance. So you can see here any IP. You could also specify the DB name. So the DB name uh, values, it's going to be which are basically the resources that we are going to create in this test. Template. So let me just move this a bit or make it a bigger. Now about other things, we have the DB name, value, the DB user, the DB password, the root password, and now we do the mapping. Now this mapping, we can use it depending on which environment we are running this. Are we running this in a production or in a dev? Here they are using just to map the architecture of the EC2 instance. It's nothing really more than mapping between the different type of architecture that that we have. If you go even further, you can also run this template in multiple regions. And for each region, we are basically providing a mapping. So if we are running this in AF South 1, this is the AMI ID that you want to use. You know that the AMI IDs, they are different from a region to another. If we look, for example, in EU West 1, which is the Irish region, you can see we are using this AMI. But in US East, we are using different AMI ID. Now the resource. In the resources section, we are just specifying what kind of resources we are going to build using this template. So we have a web server security group. The type of it is as a security group. And now we specify the properties. What is the description of this security group? And what are the security group ingress or inbound? So ingress refers to the inbound rule. We are saying we want to open port 80 for any IP and we want to open port SSH from a SSH location, which is the parameter we defined in the previous section in the previous block. The second resource is the web server. We say type AWS EC2 
an instance and the metadata of it, it is only a script we are going to load, which is the cloud formation in it or initials. And we will, I will show you now where is this, uh, this kind of script is located. For the configuration sets, we want to install AW, uh, WordPress uh, using the cloud formation. So we will install the cloud formation template, install WordPress, and we want to configure WordPress. If you keep going, you can see that the template is very large, but most of these blocks, you really need to build them in a cascaded manner. So you don't need to build everything from scratch all the time. So in the services here, we are just specifying the services that we are going to use. Once we do install the cloud formation, then we have installed WordPress. And then this is what we need to do once we start to enter the state of configuring WordPress. We want to set the MySQL root password, want to create a database. And finally, we want to configure the WordPress using this command. Now, normally this command is referring to a script inside the EC2 machine once the EC2 is successfully finished and created. The properties here, we are passing the image ID. So we need to find in mapping in the above when I show you the image ID, which is depend on the region. So we need to map that. We also want to map the instance type from the parameters and the security group and the key name. And finally, we have the output section. In the output section, we want to print the public URL of the WordPress that we just created. So this is going to display in the cloud formation stack the result of the creation. So let me go back now and I just selected WordPress blog and I click on the next. Now in the parameter here, they want to ask, uh, they're asking us about WordPress DB name. You can change this. That's one the first parameter we have. We also ask to enter the stack name. So I'm going to create a demo here. The DB password, you can use any password that you want, but you have to remember this password because you will use it later on to tell WordPress how to connect to the RDS or to the DB that you create. So I'm going to put lab dash password. Hopefully this will work for this demo. And for the DB root password, we are going to put uh, the same lab dash password. Now the DB user, you can use the admin account. So you can create an admin account. This is going to be the user for the DB or you can choose a root. Now you can see here from the instance type in the parameter, I could select any instance type that I want. So I'm going to select you to medium and the key name here. It will give me a list of all the key pairs that I have. And in this particular scenario, add the, I have the Vocarium key. I have also the options to change this from any IP, maybe to my um, IP or to a specific subnet, depending on how I want to deploy this cloud formation template. Click on the next now. In the next, you can configure a stack options. These are for the cloud formation stack. It's not for the template. You can specify the name. You can call this, for example, demo. Now the permission, if you need any a specific role name, or you can pass the role Amazon resource name, which is the unique ID. Now what, what will happen when we do a have a stack and that stack will be failed? You have two behavior once the creation of the stack failed. First one, you roll back all stock re stack resources, which means you don't need to create anything, whether you create everything. And if you fail, don't create anything. The second option, you preserve those resources that they were created successfully. In rollback, you won't have the whole cloud formation um, stack if any of the resource creation failed. In the second one, if, for example, you are building a web server EC2 and RDS, the creation of the RDS failed, you are going to see the EC2 alone. And later, maybe you can fix and modify the cloud formation template in order to build the RDS successfully. Let us keep it to the default and then we click on the next. Now in the last step, it's going to show me the demo. We specify a template and that template URL is the description of the template. And sometimes in the root account, if you are doing this from a root account or from an IM admin user, it can give you the total estimated cost here using the EC2 cost optimization service. And these are the parameters that I just passed and all the configuration. All I need to do is to create the stack. So once you do create a stack, this is will create the stack and that stack, you can see I have an error here in the DB password because you need to use only alpha and numeric characters. In a very simple way, you can create a change set for your configuration and that change set, you can basically have it nested or if you don't want it to be nested, which means V111 or V1.2 and so on, you can just create a change set. And in the change set, 
you can go back and provide modification to the parameter. So I'm going to go in the previous tab here in the DB password. Um, I put lab dash password. So we need to put only lab password because this is only alpha in human. So lab pass. And we will try now to create again the stack. And if we have an error, the cloud formation is going to tell me here. Now the cloud formation template is in a creation, as you can see from the status. So you can see here, there is multiple things. There is the stack demo, information, the events, what is happening. So now it is creating the web server. It managed to create the web security group successfully. And you can verify this by just going to the security group in another tab. So go to VPC in a new tab now. And you will be able to see if you go to security group that the security group, which is the web security group for the demo is already created with inbound rules. Go back to your cloud formation and you can see now in the resources, it will print out the resources that was managed to create it successfully. So here we have a EC2 security group created, create complete, and we still have the AWS EC2 instances. The output is the section where you want to wait to see the URL or of the WordPress. In the parameters, you are going to see what you have passed as parameters to the cloud formation template. In the template itself, you are going to read the template that you just used to create this stack and whether you want to use it in designer or to see it in the designer or you want just to see it here. The change set is the one you can going to create to provide different modification for this template depending on your need and in the update. So if you look here to the main events, this is will take a few minutes to launch at the EC2, configure it, and also install and configure the WordPress based on the templates step that I described just a few minutes ago. So we need to wait for all of this to finish. So let us pause now until this event uh, um, give us or the output print out the WordPress URL or the event here tell me that the whole demo stack in this tab here create complete. Similar to this stack here. And if you notice, this is the stack that you use or AWS use to build your lab environment.